Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over 10 Storage Wars moments that were insane. If you're a fan of Storage Wars, let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to leave a like on the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every day when we release new videos. Now, let's get started. Number 1. Elvis Presley Newspapers in Mint Condition The infamous Dave Hester is well known on the show for being lucky with his storage finds, often paying a small price for the storage unit well worth the amount he paid for. Oftentimes, Dave Hester ranks up the prices, earning himself hate from many of the cast members on the show. In the first season, the cast had been presented with a storage unit full of old newspapers, and while it initially wasn't a hopeful find, Dave Hester thought otherwise. He made a $750 bid on a hopeful storage unit, finding himself with a pile of what seemed to be just piles of newspapers with wrapping over them. What he discovered next would amaze him. Stacks of mint condition Elvis Presley newspapers dating to the day of his death filled the storage unit. Dave Hester was amazed by the find, and when he had them appraised, they were worth about $90,000. He really scored big for only putting $750 on the table. Number 2. Pirate Treasure at the Bottom of the Storage Unit For one lucky buyer in California, finding this pirate's gold was a whole lot easier. An auction of unclaimed storage units led to half... Normally, treasure chests are found at the bottom of the ocean in fairy tales, but for this lucky bidder, he struck gold. Literally. As unreal as it sounds, there were even news reports on the subject of how insane the finding was. Dan and Laura Dotson were interviewed about the unit on Fox News, discussing the wild finding. While the bidder would remain anonymous for obvious personal reasons, they found the valuable gold coins in the most unsuspecting place. When they discovered the coins, they were placed inside of a blue Rubbermaid tote normally used to store household items, toys, or clothing. With this wonderful find, the anonymous bidder only spent $600 and $1,100 on two units that day where he would come across the coins. In the end, the bidder walked away with a whopping $500,000 to his name. Funnily enough, it took three people to move the tote. With how much those coins added up to, it's unsurprising that the rubber tote would be so heavy. Open for a, a, a pirate's treasure chest, though. A Rubbermaid blue tote doesn't sound yeah. quite you know. <laughs> evocative. Number three, Storage Wars Confrontations. It's not uncommon for many heated arguments to happen on Storage Wars, especially with Dave Hester on the show. But Dave was at fault for this one. While there had been a few fights, this one stuck out quite a bit to the audience. Entertaining to some, while difficult to watch for others. While the married couple Dan and Laura were taking bids for one of the many units they were selling, Mary was left without having her bid accounted for. While she didn't have much of an issue with the situation, Dave had another. He believed he needed to voice his opinion, and this ended in a violent altercation between the couple and Dave. Shortly after the fight had been broken up, the filming for that day had been ceased. Number 4. Brandy and Jared's Tooth Fairy Discovery Okay, Bozak, we'll see you back at the shop. As suggested, Teeth really took this storage unit to a whole new level. Not the most shocking discovery in a storage wars, but definitely a surprising and oddly intriguing one. Jared's bid for this locker only came up to $50, but finding the teeth brought the value of the storage unit from $50 to $300 alone. At first, Brandy seemed off-putting, but after bringing the teeth to the OSC Dental Academy, they find the teeth date back to the 20s when they were used for dentures. They were a bit disappointed when they found the teeth were only worth about $300, but took it which brought the overall value of the unit to a total of $1,400, $1,350 more than the original bidding price. The left one moves around to tell the hour, and you see these 12 marks around okay. here. And the right one moves around to tell the minute, and the skull clock. Number 5, Frank A. Gutierrez Art Hall. I have never seen this much sports memorabilia in one place in my life, even in a store. The good kind of hitting. Look at this piece of art here. Who would have imagined finding over 100 paintings from the famous Frank Gutierrez? Not Daryl. Normally, bidders pay anywhere between $300 to a little under $2,000, but 
But for Daryl, he really went in for the kill. He gambled $3,600 on this storage unit. It seemed like quite a bit of money to risk on a storage unit that could be a flop, but the payoff was far greater than the risk he took. Calling in an art curator, he had the paintings inspected, and luckily enough they were authentic paintings from the artist himself, leaving Daryl astonished by the findings. $1,000? BAM! Being a gambler isn't just about winning. It's not? Number 6, Renee's Museum Find. 150 for this one, 500 for that one. <gasps> oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Even if it's a remake, it's at least $200. When you're looking through storage units, finding useless things are often very common, as most units are used to store old household items. But when Renee scored this unit, he finds tens of thousands of dollars worth of kitchenware, museum collectibles, and even a grandfather clock. Most of the items range from Chinese artifacts to pure silver dining table sets. He quickly names prices for each item as he goes through each finding. And as he goes through each finding, the price starts to go into the thousands. Near the end of it all, Renee estimates that the grand total for his newly found haul earned him about $50,000. I mean, look at all this stuff. We're like sitting in a pile of cash right now. Unbelievable. By the time we price everything and do our research, I'm telling you right now, we're gonna make $50,000 on the Number seven, Jared crashing Brandy's car. <gasps> what I have. Trusting people with your car can be a rather difficult task, but when they crash your car into a pole, trust is immediately thrown out the window. Not paying attention, Jared made the horrible mistake of crashing Brandy's car causing Brandy to gasp in shock while Jared checks the damage. Well, not before turning off the car first. It's no help that Dave is laughing about it in the background, and their storage unit that day barely making them any money. I'm sure $500 will barely be able to fix the dent that was left in their back bumper. Wait, up, go a little far, now go back. What? Back! Uh Number eight, Barry's $6,000 head. Valley parking at these auctions? Because I'm late. We made it. Now, as wild as it may seem, this unit had a head with a full set of teeth in it. No, it wasn't a real head, but a wooden sculpture. Made by Mike Meadow, the wooden sculpture was quite a valuable item in the hall amongst a couch and a table barely worth a dime. Barry was intrigued by the head as it had a full set of dentures and a window in the back of its head. When he got it appraised, he found he had scored about $6,000 for the wooden head, gaining more than what he thought he had paid for it. But while it was worth quite a bit of money, he couldn't bring himself to sell it. During the show, Barry is known for buying unique items, and when he laid his eyes on this, he couldn't help but keep the wooden head and walked away earning nothing on the unit. $6,000. And maybe more. Number nine, creepy doll. Love dolls. No, I don't. Look at this one. That is the freakiest looking doll I've ever seen. There's weird clothes and everything. Is there in like there. a manufacturer mark or anything on it? In many horror movies, dolls are used as a staple creep factor. For Brandy, she wished she hadn't been the one to find this doll. For most viewers, creepy old dolls are a nightmare, and with how old the doll was, Brandy was no exception to the fear it gave her. While she handled it carefully, Jared was ready to get it looked at by a doll collector. He even gave it a voice, creeping out Brandy even more. When they had it appraised, they found it to be a bust. With all the cracks and chipping in the head of the doll, the condition of it being poor, and the wiring in the doll loose, they found the doll was only worth about $50 compared to the $175 they spent on the unit. In the end, it was a better dog toy than a collector's doll. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. You wanted to throw it away. I still want to throw it away. Brandy, what are you reading? Number 10, Voodoo Doll. Let's go, let's get started. I'm back at the locker that I bought. I signed the paychecks. So I'm taking one of the guys to help me get this stuff back to orange. Ending the list, the most insane and creepy finds starts and ends with ritualistic findings. What looked to be African ritualistic items plagued the storage locker, being riddled with animal bones to staffs. Brandy was the least satisfied with her buy. She carefully goes through the locker, horrified to find bird bones in bags, beaks attached to a stick, and a sculpture crafted to look like a man with a chicken on his head. She can barely even hold some of the items, and at the end of looking through the locker, 
is disgusted and fearful of the locker. It's very apparent she doesn't want any part of selling any of the objects inside the dreadful locker. And that's more than understandable. I was thinking geeks. Oh, like that's geeks. even worse. What does Bozak have, Randy? How is that a chicken? It's a dude with a chicken on his head. He's seen his better years. Which one of these was the most shocking to you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.